This is Eric. I'm going to talk about editing OpenStreetMap. Before you edit OpenStreetMap, you have to know what the data looks like. And mostly the data is shapes. And the terms that OpenStreetMap uses to talk about shapes are nodes, ways, and closed ways, which basically translate to points, lines, and polygons. When you draw a node way or a closed way, um, you're actually just drawing a shape and you're not, that shape doesn't have any meaning. You have to give those shapes meaning using attributes as you would in any GIS. Um, so if you're in QGIS, adding attributes looks like an attribute table with columns and rows, a row for each feature, similarly in CardoDB. Uh, but Attributes in OpenStreetMap are a lot more like GeoJSON attributes, where each feature has a set of properties, and those properties can vary by feature. So for instance, if you look at Union Square, it has these three attributes, leisure um, attribute of type park, the name attribute with Union Square Park in it, and the source, which is uh, Bing in this case because somebody traced it from the aerial imagery. Similarly, you could look at a train line, and it's going to have very different attributes because it's a train line, not a park. So for instance, you might talk about whether it's electrified or not, or what the gauge is. And these are attributes that don't make any sense at all for a park. So we don't force all features to have the same attributes. Okay, so if if we used a table, we'd have lots of lots of columns, basically a column for every attribute you'd ever want to give to a feature, and most of those would be empty because most of those don't make sense for every feature. And finally, if there was such a si situation, then you would always have to just use the attributes that are already given, and um, that's very restrictive. So the system OpenStreetMap uses is a tagging system. So you add a tag to a feature for every attribute that you want to add to that feature, and these tags are in the form of key value pairs. For instance, Looking back at Union Square Park, you have a, ta a tag leisure equals park. The left side of that is the name, and the right side is the value. And in OpenStreetMap, we just say leisure equals park. Similarly, with the name tag, you have the name of the tag is name, and the value of the tag is Union Square West, and this is for a street, obviously, not for the park. Um, and we call this, in OpenStreetMap and in other internet situations, we call this a folksonomy. It's a collaborative system of categorization, rather than a top-down one that other people just have to follow. So uh, this is, I think this is really great because it leads to things like this. You can you can add any attributes you want to something. So if you wanted to indicate whether or not a bar spins, you could use a spinny tag if you want to. And that allows the project to grow and it allows you to exercise creativity in determining how to describe the world around you. Uh, but if Ultimately, if you want your data to be useful and show up on maps and your tiles that you're using online, you should try to be consistent with what the community uses for tagging. And there are three ways to go about doing this. One is to look around you. So once you start editing, look around at other similar features that are already mapped and try to be consistent with those. Another way is to check the wiki. I'll open that right now. It's wiki.openstreetmap.org. And say if you're um, trying to tag a building, 
you could search up here for building and it'll bring up a page that talks about all about the building tag. The simplest um, would be to say building equals yes. That would just indicate that yes, indeed it is a building, but there are lots of other things you could do. And um, some of the other values are on this page if you click the building key. So we're on key building. Um, Right, so you could have building equals apartments, or building equals dormitory, and so on. And so on. Okay. Uh, don't treat this as gospel, though. If you see people, if you see a lot of people around you doing something different, then uh, I lean towards being consistent with the community rather than obeying the wiki. Another way to go about this is to check tag info. That's at taginfo.openstreetmap.org. Okay, so this is kind of similar. Um, you, we have a bunch of popular keys for tags here. One is the amenity key. And when we click on it, we see that it's often used for nodes or ways, rarely for relations, which we didn't talk about and we're not going to talk about today. And we see one example of that. And then we see the distribution of values for that tag, for that key. So often people use amenity equals parking. Sometimes they use amenity equals school or place of worship. And then a bunch that are used less frequently. And you can click on the values tab here, and this is probably going to take a second because there's so many different values that there can be, and you can see the distribution in much more detail. So you see that people use amenity equals wastebasket, and there are 75,000 of them in the map. So if you can't find something in your area that is similar to what you're trying to map, Check tag info, check the wiki, and try to come to a an educated guess about the best way to tag something. So there are a bunch of ways that the data can get into OpenStreetMap. Uh, one way is imports, which are basically bots that people program to bring data in from external data sources. We usually frown upon this and try to do it in a very limited way. So you want to talk to the community before you try doing something like that. Uh, another way is just opening up the editor on openstreetmap.org and using aerial imagery. Another way is going out and surveying with a GPS receiver and recording your tracks and recording where you are while you're walking around. And finally, there's field papers, which I'm going to talk about really quickly here. So field papers, uh, it's a tool to help you create a multi-page atlas of anywhere in the world. It's at fieldpapers.org. And basically, you, you create an atlas, you print it out, and then you draw on it, and scan it, and upload your scan. And then that gets geo-referenced, and you can draw on top of it. Went through that quickly. I'm going to show you make an at atlas. I'll look for something near me. <clears throat> Often you're going to be want to be much more zoomed in than this, because you're going to be drawing on this map. Uh, let's say we are going to Governor's Island. Then you would want to make this much, much smaller so that you can actually draw on it. And maybe you're going with 10 people or 12 people, let's say. And you want to make one atlas that everybody can use to survey this area. Then you would do this and then you would pick your tile background. Um, often it's the humanitarian is kind of nicer looking. And then you click next, and I'll say governors. And, 
and you can choose whether to just have the maps maps and notes on their own pages or combined. I like to combine them and then click finish. And then this will take a couple of seconds or minutes rather and then it'll turn into a PDF that you can download. Then you can go have a fun mapping party with a bunch of other people and take your pages home, scan them as an image, and then upload them back using this section. You just pick a file and upload it. And then you wait a little bit and then you get to a screen like this. And this is something that I just uploaded a few minutes ago. You can see that I have some markings on the buildings here, and for each one I wrote the number that I was looking at, and then I filled in some details. So I'm going to go ahead and map some of these, and I'm going to do so in ID, which is the built-in editor for OpenStreetMap. So I'm going to click that link. I'm already logged in to OpenStreetMap, so it goes ahead and adds it for me. Um, and you can see that the field papers that I uploaded are here in the background. You can't see them too well right now. If you wanted to make them brighter, you go over here to the background settings. And this is the opacity, or the brightness selector. Um, by default, you're turned down to 25. I think 75 is a bit easier to read. <clears throat> Okay, so now you can pretty nicely see the points that I was talking about, and I usually have my hard copy right next to me so I can read that while I'm working on it. Alright, so why don't we get right to it. The first point here is within this building, and there are three addresses at this building, but actually there two of these are duplicated. Can you see that? This one is 305 Flatbush Ave. This one is also 305 Flatbush Ave. And I... so I want to delete one of those because that's redundant. And so I'm going to click on one, go to view on openstreetmap.org, and I'm going to click on the other one and do the same exact thing. And I can see, oh, I added this one a few years ago. And you can see that someone working on the New York City buildings and addresses upload did it a few months ago. Um, okay, so I'm going to assume that the import is going to be more accurate in this case. And also the import has the zip code, which is nice. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the previous one and make the map a little bit neater. Okay. And so the next thing to do is add the information for this first point, it's healthy nibbles. Um, Okay, so I'm going to type it in here in the name, Healthy Nibbles. And then, so this place was like a smoothie place, um, maybe a cafe, but before I decide that, I want to go to the wiki, wiki.openstreetmap.org, and I'll search for cafe. Okay. So when you do this, uh, there's going to be a bunch of, there are probably going to be a bunch of mat matches. Look for the one that says tag in the title. And we can see, okay, amenity equals cafe. Um, informal place with sit-down facilities, leveling beverages and light meals or snacks. Um, that sounds pretty decent to me. Um, so I guess I'm going to add that tag. To do that, there are a bunch of shortcuts here. I'm going to go to the All Tags section, though, instead. And here you can see all of the details. So this top part is a nice, 
user-friendly breakdown, or rather a synthesis of what these tags are trying to say in a format that is easily readable. But sometimes you need to just add tags manually, and uh, you do that by click clicking the plus button, and then I'm going to go amenity. It will auto-complete for me. I'll tab over and say cafe. Okay, you can see, it might be hard to see right now, but the marker turned to a mug. And we see that ID recognized that I changed it into a cafe. And the name is still there. Um, there's a cuisine section that is empty right now. And I wonder, juice, some sandwich? Hmm. I don't really know what is best in this case. Maybe it's a coffee shop? Hmm. So, in this case, I'm going back to the wiki. You can see there's a link to the key called Cuisine. I'm going to click on it, and here we'll see a bunch of values that people have suggested. Um, let's see. I really want a juice shop. <laughs> or... Hmm. Smoothies? <laughs> so, this might be a good time to come over to Tag Info and look up Cuisine and see what other people use and look at the values and maybe I'll filter in the values. Smoothies? Yeah. There are four. And you see another useful thing about Tag Info is you get to see all of the typos and weird things that people do. Um, I might go with smoothies. What about juice? Is that that's more frequently used? Um, what about just snacks? Hmm. I'm going to go with juice for now, and because that's most prevalent. And if if people need to change it later, I won't be offended. So okay. Um, so I edited Healthy Nibbles. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and save and add a commit message. Add Healthy Nibbles. Juice bar and smoothies. Okay. And I'm going to click save. And that'll take a couple of seconds. And... Great. Done. I just added a point that I surveyed in field papers. Okay, so now I'm going to click on that point again, and I'm going to come down to the very bottom on the left, the view on openstreetmap.org link, and I'm going to look at my point now. If you'll remember, before it did not have these three last tags, amenity is equal to cafe, cuisine equals juice, name equals healthy, healthy nibbles, and you can see that it updated and said that it was edited just a minute ago by me, and you can see the change set that that's part of. Um, change sets are batches of changes, a set of changes, and you can see in this change set, each one has a unique ID, and everybody can see my message, so it helps to add a useful message when you're here. And finally, you can also see that the change set has tags, so it knows that I used the ID editor, and it knows that I was using field papers. Um, finally, you can see that it shows that I deleted a node, has a strike through it, and that I edited this node.
Okay, let's do one or two more. So, point number two, I put down superior sides two, and that's a laundromat. All right, so I'm going to add a point. And this one's different because there wasn't already a point there. So we're starting from scratch, and um, ID has a helpful search function. I'm going to just start typing laundry, and laundry comes up. You should be able to click the I button here and get more information about it. A shop to get your normal clothes washed. And then I'm going to open the wiki page for that, and I'm going to remove my other tabs. Um, right, so there are other keys that we could have used when we were looking around here, um, including self-service and laundry service. I did not note that while I was out, but that might be something that somebody adds later. Anyway, I'm going to pick laundry back in ID and add the name. Superior. And um, I don't have any other information about it. So I think that's good enough. And I'm going to click Save. Add superior says to save. All right. And I'll add a point for three. Three is a is a different thing entirely. It's an Indian restaurant. I'll start typing Indian. No. Restaurant. Yes. I'll choose restaurants. I'll add the name. And in the cuisine, I should be able to just type Indian, and it auto-completes for me. And I'll pick that. And that's all there is to that one. I'll click Save. And add a useful message. OK. So. That is probably enough for now. I'm going to show you some other things. So while you're here, you can go to the background settings. And you can see that there are other layers down here. So if we were done with our field papers, we could go to the Bing aerial imagery and see what it looks like from satellites. In this case, the buildings look really out of whack, but it's actually um, probably I would account for it using because the <clears throat> because of the angle that the satellites were at when they took the imagery. This building data came from the city, so I trust it for the most part. Um, some other things you can do in this background area are turn on GPS traces. That'll take a few seconds, but you can see um, different people's traces have different colors. You can see that somebody went all around here. Um, that's not necessarily going to be really useful, especially <laughs> in places like this. Um, that's amazing. It's not going to be terribly useful in New York City, but if you were surveying in other places, it'll be a lot more useful. You can turn that off. Um, and you can turn on the Tiger 2012 roads overlay. And this is, so the original road data came from Tiger, and I think it's 2005 Tiger or somewhere around there, and the Tiger data has gotten a lot better since then, and you can see how, so you, 
this is the actual road, as in OpenStreetMap, and you can see underneath it that, that is not a thing that I can drag. That is the Tiger data, the, the newer Tiger data. So I'm going to undo what I just did. You can see that they're off a little bit, and when I see that, I'll often just pull this over and line it up so that there isn't that difference. Make it a little bit straighter. Only do that if it's actually more correct, though. Don't just assume that Tiger is more correct, but use your judgment based on the satellite imagery and knowing the place, hopefully, that you're editing in. Okay, I think that about does it. Um, don't forget to save after you do something like that. And when it's something like this, I'll say lined up roads with, or Flatbush Avenue with 2012 Tiger Data. Okay. And that's about it. Hope that was helpful. Let me know if you could use any help, any more help editing OpenStreetMap.